Packaging and deploying apps from Intune can be challenging. Navigating the intricate maze of packaging, settings, testing, compliance, and failures can seem like an endless uphill battle. But don't worry, Recast Software has sponsored this video to tell you all about their new application manager for Intune. No agents, no other client software required. It just works. Now we're gonna start here from absolute zero and get you fully up and running. But if you already have a Recast management server, you can skip to this timecode in the video. Here in the Azure portal, we're gonna need to deploy a SQL virtual machine. You pick your subscription, resource group, give it a name, pick your region and your availability option. And as far as availability goes, any environment smaller than 20,000 clients doesn't need a SQL cluster or a secondary server or anything like that. So I'll just go with the default zone. And the management server could run on as little as eight gigs of RAM, but of course, if you have thousands of clients and apps, you're gonna need more horsepower. So pick your size accordingly. Then just put in your local admin credentials, remove your public IP if you want some better security, and check the box for the hybrid use benefit, which lets you save up to 49% on this virtual machine if you have a license with software assurance. Now on the next page, Let's talk about storage for just a minute. Now you can use this VM's local disk for all of your installations and packages, or you could add another data disk here if you like to keep those things separate from your OS, or you could simply use Azure Files or in any other network file share to store all that stuff, completely up to you. On the networking page, it's all just the usual. Pick your network and your subnet, and I like to disable the public IP address for, again, better security, and I don't use a NSG here on my NIC because I already have one protecting the subnet. And since we don't need a second or third management server at this point, we don't need a load balancer either. So let's hit next. Here's all of our SQL server settings and the default port is just fine for your private traffic. And we are not going to be using SQL authentication. We're gonna tie this in with Active Directory Auth and Cloud Auth really isn't a thing yet, but Stay tuned, which means we're also not gonna be using a key vault in this scenario either. The disk layout and SQL collation defaults are all just fine, and you wanna check this box again if you have SQL licenses that have software assurance so you can get that hybrid use benefit as well, and click Next. Here's where you add your tags like all Azure experts do, and then Create. Now while that VM is building, let's jump over to Enter ID and then we need to create a application registration that'll allow you to publish apps from Recast into your Intune environment. And then at the top, click Add. Give it a name and then just click Register at the bottom. Now you're gonna wanna open Notepad and copy here the application's client ID and your tenant ID. Put those into your Notepad and then on the left, go to Certs and Secrets. Create a new client secret and give that a name. And for the expiration, you should really pick that to whenever your licenses for recast are going to expire. That way everything's kind of in sync. Then click add. Copy the value from your new secret into your notepad just like this. And now on the left, we wanna go to the API permissions and add a new permission. Select the graph up here. Then you wanna pick the application permissions. We're gonna look for device management apps, read, write, all then device management configuration read all, group member read all, and finally device read all, and then click add. Now you just need to click here to grant your admin consent and click yes. At this point, you wanna to go to the recastsoftware.com page and you wanna find your management server and click the link to download the software and this other link next to it for your license file. And then we need to copy those and put them over on our SQL server, which means we need to sign in. Join the server to the domain, reboot, and then we're gonna sign back in as the local admin one more time. Open the SQL Server Management Studio, and then you wanna go to Security up there on the left, and then go to Logins. Right click and add a new login, then click Search, put in your directory name, and Authenticate, and now we wanna find our user who's gonna be our recast admin from the domain, then go to server roles on the left, and they're gonna need DB creator and sysadmin. Then click okay. Now we're gonna add one more login, and this time type the domain name slash the name of the computer with a dollar sign at the end. 
Then for the server roles, DB Creator, click OK, close the Management Studio, and now we want to open the Computer Management Console. Go to the Users and Groups, add a new group as the local admin, and that's going to be our same recast administrator user from the domain. And now sign out and sign back in as that user. Now we're ready to start installing the recast management server. Click next. Now recast is going to set up a web page and it's going to need a unique IIS port. So if you have other websites running on this server already, and they're using something like 443, you're going to need to pick something else for recast. But in this case, I don't. So I'm going to use 443. And that way I don't have to update any of my Azure NSG rules because I already allow 443 on this network. Click next. And if you have your own certificate authority, you're going to want to issue a new IIS cert from there. In my case, I don't. So I'll just use a self-signed cert. Next, you want to click and browse here for your license file. And you'll see that that's successfully loaded. Enter the creds from the same account that you did in SQL and click test. Looks like we're valid. Next, test your domain connection, which all looks good. Next. Now this is for the connection to configuration manager, which I don't have in this environment. So I'll just click test here. It's going to fail, check the box and then click next. Now, while everything is going here, we want to make sure that everything is loading in SQL correctly. So open SSMS, go to the databases. And in just a minute or two, you'll see that populated with a new database, check under the tables and it should look something like this. Now we're ready to set up a file share to host our apps. And I'll just create that from the computer management console and shares just on my local C drive. But of course you could use a network file share or Azure files if you want to. And we're going to give the admin full control and the everyone else read. Now, before you click finish on your install, see right here, it says to click here, do that. And then sign in with your new recast admin account on the left, go to administration, then permissions, add a user, and then type in your domain user. Click search, check the box and then click add. Now hit the edit button here and make sure you check the box to make them an admin and then click save. Now refresh your browser and then go up to the dashboards and now you should have all these items and that means that you've got all the right permissions. Now on the left, go to administration and then proxies and it should have the proxy service registered just like this. If not, you're going to want to open your services console and check the recast proxy service and just give it a restart. Then go back to the portal and refresh and you should be good to go. Now you're ready to connect the recast management server to enter ID over here in the service connections. Click add, select Azure Active Directory from the dropdown, enter the name of your tenant and then from your notepad, paste in the client, tenant and secret, select your proxy and your admin user, check the box and submit. And now you can click the test button. And at the bottom here, you'll see the little test and then it goes green and you are all good to go. Now there's just one more step before we can start doing the apps. Go to the application manager and set up, enter the UNC for the share and then click next at the bottom. And we'll skip this page for now and just click next and check the box for no here. We'll do this manually and click submit and now click OK. OK, it's app time. Go to the application manager and applications. And here you go, a list of over 3000 curated tested apps that are all fully working and ready to deploy. Now we need to think about use cases. Now you could deploy any individual app just by clicking the button, or you can think about them as groups of apps in a deployment process. Now there are no limit to the number of deployment processes you can create and no limit to the number of apps in any single deployment. So the sky's the limit. Now in my environment, I've got just three basic apps that I want every computer to have that we manage Chrome, Notepad++ and VLC. Now someone asked me one time why just about every demo uses these three simple apps. And the answer is because they're quick and simple, but in recast with their application workspace, formerly known as liquid, no application is harder than any other because they're all packaged and managed for you. So you'll see in my follow up video to this where we actually deploy AutoCAD using the same method. So stay tuned for that. Click on deployment process and add a new process. Select your Entra environment, which is going to deploy into Intune. And you could have multiple Intune tenants here if you need to just make sure that they're all registered and then click next. 
and then you just search for your apps by name. So let's type in Chrome. Then you can check the box for the version and archetype that you want. Then do the same thing for Notepad, and I'll pick that one, and then VLC, and take that one, and click Next. Now give your deployment a name, and no one's really gonna see that name except the admin, so call it whatever you like. Now we need to search for a group of users to entitle this package to. Find them, click Save, and close. Now with our deployment created, we wanna set the behaviors of the deployment starting with how quickly we want the users to get these apps. Well, in this case, everyone should have these apps immediately. Now you can go to the gear over on the right, and this is where you can set the name format, but I like the default, so I'll leave that alone. Click up on advanced, and now we've got a ton of other metadata and other options, just like you do in Intune. Now, sometimes your installs need additional parameters, and that's where you would put those, but the silent and restart are already baked in there, so you don't need to add them. Now we've got restarts and groups that you want to exclude, how you want to do cleanup and supersedence. So set things as you want for that deployment and click save. And now you can click over here and manage some more settings. Set your deployment type and user notifications and then click advanced. And you can change the availability timings and grace period here as well. When you're done, click save. And another thing that you can do is add more entitlements. Now, usually when you're deploying apps, you've got a test ring and then it goes to test ring two and then eventually to production. Well, you can add that right here and then just add another group like we did before. And then we can even set the delay for something here like a week. And you can set an additional delay in there if you want to like another week. So before this group gets everything, it's gonna be two more weeks, which gives you plenty of time for testing. Just don't forget to go in there and change your notifications as you need to so people don't get all the pop-ups. Then just click save. And if we're ready to go, we can click run at the top. Back in the administration pane, you can go over to the audit logs and that's where you'll see the new imports happening right there. And you'll see one of those for each application that's in your group. And there's even more details right over here. You can scroll down and see some of that and scroll over to the right. And down there we can find the app name. This is for Notepad. And now if you look over at your file share, we've got folders for each one of our apps. And if you drill down into there, you'll find the Intune win file already packaged for you and exported over to Intune, where you can go to all apps, and then there's Notepad right there. When you look at it, you can go to the properties, see it's created by Recast Application Manager. And if you scroll down, there's all the requirements that you set, and at the bottom, are the entitlements. This is gonna be a huge time saver to all of you who use Intune and need to manage your apps anywhere. But if you wanna kick things up a notch, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. And happy learning.